Welcome to uh, this wonderful broadcast that we have here today. Uh, my name's Mark. I'm from Moxie Works. I'm part of a partnership that uh, we're currently doing with Active Pipe. Um, and I am fortunate enough today to present with you Josh Fegan. Josh is <laughs> quite the man around the real estate agencies uh, industry within Australia. Um, and I'm incredibly uh, excited to see and hear what he has to say about how we can provide context for everyone here about how to win in a competitive real estate market in the current state. Hi, Josh. Hey, fantastic, Mark. So great to see you there. I know that you're going to stick around today. Uh, we're going to ask some for some great questions from any of our attendees. And certainly, Mark, I'll get you to facilitate that. And no doubt you might have some of your own questions um, as we go throughout the course of today, right? So let's jump in and, and have a really good quality conversation around, you know, what it really takes to win um, in a competitive market. And you've got to realise that no matter where you are, whether or not you're in Australia or New Zealand, you know, right now, this is probably one of the most competitive markets for listings that we've seen in quite some time. And whatever we do is we come to the back end of July that ultimately allows us to get plenty of our listings coming into our August and our September period. So literally spring has officially started. It may not be on the calendar, but it certainly is in terms of the campaigns that you're going to be listing today. And so what we want to do is we want to ultimately give you a ton of value of what you can be doing to be better when you're actually there to not only win the listings, but to make sure that you can build better quality relationships with every single one of your sellers. And the best way to think about it, and I kind of love this, you know, the Rolling Stones says that time waits for no one. And if you think a little bit about that, like literally we can't wait for a market to get better. In New Zealand, we can't wait for a general election. And certainly in Australia, we can't wait to work out whether or not we're going to be holding the Commonwealth Games or not. So now more than ever before, this is your chance to be a great real estate agent and to really get out there in marketplace. And really what I always think about for people is that what is tomorrow? Well, ultimately it is what we make it. Now I'm doing the rounds of the grounds of some of my best agents and literally they've been reporting over the last seven to 14 days, a phenomenal level of activity in people wanting to have conversations about when they should be selling and when ultimately they should be coming to market. And so what we're going to do today is that we're gonna get you really focused around how great people stay um, in front of people as much as they can. And that now more than ever before that they learn how to build a significant amount of momentum through great marketing. And it really is this whole idea that whenever you think about your platforms for success, and certainly Active Pipe is a massive part of that, that ultimately we've got to have a goal. And I'm a big believer that you're going to build a really big database inside of your residential real estate career. You're going to meet buyers, you're going to meet sellers, you're going to meet buyer sellers, you're going to meet market appraisals, you're going to be there with past clients. And when you think about all of those different people, your goal is to learn how to be able to keep in relationship with them at scale. So when you first start out in residential real estate, do you remember when you first opened up your database and you had one contact and how exciting that was, you know, to be able to serve that one contact. But the problem is, is that naturally you're going to go out there, you're going to do open for inspections, you're going to be able to work with people around justice and just sold, you're going to do maybe some auction campaigns and you're going to go to having hundreds, if not thousands of contacts in your database. And ultimately, what is your plan on how you're going to build a great set of relationships with them? And the secret to that is to make sure that you've actually got a system that's going to allow you to communicate with that particular group of people. And once you've got that system right, then that's actually going to allow you to go to produce outcomes. Now today, we're going to talk about the importance of actually having an item of value. And that's something that people actually value on a regular and consistent basis. They naturally subscribe to, to receive your emails that allows them to be able to make better quality decisions because they're getting the right insights, they're getting the right know-how, they're getting the right knowledge, they're feeling that they're building a brand relationship with you. And this is a really important part around what great estate agents are all about. And we're gonna show you some basic templates, some wireframes that you can be using to go to build into your active pipe templates. Now, as a part of that conversation from the great systems, you've got to go and design those systems. You've got to design what that email is gonna look like. And then you've got to teach the people in your team how to go and build those emails and build that system to then make sure you can go and produce the outcomes so you can go and set bigger and better goals. And this is a great way to go to approach your business. So the first thing I get a lot of people to do is that I dare you to add you to your database and to see what you actually get from you. And I think that a lot of real estate agents will be horrified to receive what they actually already send out to their existing clients. If you're in there as a past client, you might feel like you're in a witness protection program because you get no emails. If you maybe you're a buyer, you might feel like you want to unsubscribe from the amount of spam that you've received from agents who just keep doing a broadcast around every property that they've actually listed as opposed to actually understanding the importance of tailored communications. 
And this is a really important driver because we're now in a very different market to where we were. I'll certainly go and show you this. This here is an idea about you know borrowing capacity. And in January last year, if I'd have gone to the bank here in Australia, that would have given me approximately a million and eighty-five thousand dollars. And by the time we get to June this year, they're only going to give me say circa six hundred and twenty thousand. That's a pretty big difference, about 460,000, about 40 percentile plus range difference in how much a borrower around a million dollars could actually borrow, literally just in the course of the last 12 months. So now more than ever before, you've got to be great at finding the buyers who want to buy and identifying the sellers who want to sell. And this is a really important part that we're looking for those people that are ultimately even buyer sellers. You know, there's the ultimate client, the person that needs to sell their existing house in order to be able to go and buy that new listing that you've actually just brought to market. And so it's a really great conversation because when you have a look at the national property clock, we've got all the majors, including Sydney and Brisbane and then Melbourne, they're definitely on the right hand side of the diagram in terms of starting to decline in the declining market, already approaching the bottom of the market cycle. And this is from a neutral third party, Heron Todd White, who is a group of valuers in Australia. And we ultimately think this document is about 30, 60 or 90 days behind what you're actually seeing on the ground because ultimately it's based usually on settlement data as opposed to what you're actually doing at the auction, certainly what you're doing when you're doing your open for inspections and ultimately maybe two, possibly three interest rate increases since they've probably tabulated the data, brought it into the reports and then got it out into their monthly PDF. So naturally, if we are getting close to the bottom of the market cycle, now is a phenomenal time for buyers to be buying and it's also to a great time for a seller to sell if they're looking to upgrade because ultimately the house that's more expensive has now become a little bit cheaper and the changeover costs are potentially the least that they've ever been. Now, if you have a quick look at it as a real estate agent all the way back since 2013-ish in Australia, practically for the last 10 years or so, you have literally just been walking down the mountain of cheap money. It has actually been an era where there's been a lot of free money out there in society and actually buyers there in 2022 and 2021, they were effectively in the free money era. All you had to do was go outside and just catch the cash. It was very much a sugar money society. People were out there buying cars and boats and jet skis and houses and all sorts of stuff. And then all of a sudden, what's actually happened over the course of this period, you've now become an alpinist, where for the first time in your residential career, you're now climbing the mountain one peak at a time to ultimately get to that new height. And you've had to really learn the skill of how to convince a buyer to buy, how to convince a seller to sell, and how to really bring those deals together, which means that now more than ever before, you want to put your marketing on autopilot. You want to make sure that you're in a position and you've got a great marketing message to consumers so you can play in a much better way. And ultimately, what I'm going to say to you is that you, what you want to do is you want to think that everything that you do is customer experience. One of the big conversations I'm having with my agents in the training rooms is to say that customer experience actually equals brand and brand equals pricing power. And the best way to explain this is that, you know, you go into a restaurant and say, Madam Sir, can we just take your jacket there for you? And when they take your jacket, you know that that's $100 a head. If you go into another restaurant, you say, oh, hey, guys, can I just get a water? They say, yeah, mate, taps over in the corner. Oh, any chance of a glass? I oh, know, just use your hands. You know, that's probably going to be about 6 to $10 a head, right? And so what you've got to realize is that customer experience, if it equals brand and brand equals pricing power, the way to better fees in the lounge room is to build better relationships with customers. Those people that have a high level of rapport, a high level of trust, are actually in a position that then they can go to win and be consistent. And this is what we know is that relevance is a really important part because it drives the frequency of the communication. So Mark, if I was in a position that I wanted to speak to you 20 times in a day, I hope that you and I were putting a deal together or doing something at a branding or marketing level. And that literally, if we were doing that, then it would make sense that we could speak that 20 times in a day but if I'm not relevant to you, then ultimately we probably shouldn't be talking. And what we want to have a look at is we want to have a look at mediums like email, which is much better than say SMS, because we can actually test and see the engagement of people that are clicking on those links and turning up on our websites and watching the videos and you know getting copies of pest and building reports and doing all of those wonderful things that they do on our websites that gives us a digital intent of the consumer, knowing that they're ready to go to do that. And also what you've got to think about is that if you're relevant and that relevancy drives the frequency of the communication and you lift the engagement through the quality of your emails, then that builds trust with the customer. And that's really about having these items of value that go to change the game. Now today, we're going to learn about the power of segmentation. So you may well and truly have a thousand contacts in your database, 
But how many of them are past clients? How many of them are market appraisals? How many of those market appraisals are actually naturally buyer sellers? In other words, if you found them something to buy, then naturally they would have something to sell. And then what are you sending to, say, for example, your landlords who might be looking to go and buy an investment property? Now, with a number of the changes that are happening across particularly the Australian residential market, we expect in the New Zealand market shortly, but certainly there is a huge number of investment properties that are currently being sold. Now, they're saying that in Victoria, in Australia, up to 40% of the listings currently available for sale were previous investment properties. Nationally, it's looking at around 30% in Sydney, where I am today, about 36% of the listings in the last 30 days have been previous investment properties. And this is going to become a massive issue for residential real estate businesses because a lot of their valuations are built around their property management businesses. And actually, if you want to solve a rental crisis, the last thing that we can have is landlords actually selling their investment properties. So I believe in actually selling your existing investment properties to your existing landlords so that naturally you can grow your rental book, your property management business, but clip the ticket on the way through from a sales perspective. So today we're gonna to think about specific audiences for very specific content. So as opposed to a prey and spray approach, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at some specific um, ideas on what we could do to be of better value. And ultimately, first you've gotta learn how to be relevant to that audience. So I want you to imagine that you're a past client. What do you expect to receive? So one of the great tools that sits inside of ActivePipe is the proximity meter, the ability for, them, for ActivePipe to automatically email your past clients whenever you list or sell a property within a 1.5 kilometer radius. So the smarts inside the technology can do that for you. And that will then drive your relevance with people, which ultimately, if that is done on a frequent basis, that will actually build a great relationship with your contacts. And what I've got to get you to think about is that if you're in a position that you have a weekly email that people see is of value, then that gives the client up to 50 times a year to be able to pop their hand up and say, hey, I need a little bit of help over here. Can you come out and give you a, a market appraisal evaluation or even a listing presentation on my particular property? And really what we've learned is that consistency builds brand. So if you think about going to any of the great supermarkets, whether or not it's Countdown in New Zealand or whether or not it's Woolworths here in Australia, you're expecting that they're going to be open at the same time each and every day and that you can walk in there and you can buy milk if you need to and you can also buy some chewing gum if you need to as well. And this is an important part that they've built a brand relationship and you probably go to the same service station every week because of its proximity, its location, the customer service experience, maybe there's a car wash there, maybe off the back of that you can pick up some bread on your way through and it's a really important conversation that in order for you to become one of the true greats of our industry, you need to have consistency in what you do in your marketing message. And that customer experience is brand and that brand is pricing power. So if you want to be able to charge more in the lounge room, you've got to make sure that you really understand what it is that you're doing. And think about this power of ultimate segmentation. Now here is one of my favorite emails. This is just an example of a wireframe. You could go to build this out inside of your active pipe template builder. And it's about maybe saying, okay, how many landlords do you have in your business? And how many archive landlords do you have? So if you're not aware, what normally happens is that if a landlord sells an investment property, or for example, they're in a position that they move back into one of their investment properties, or maybe they take their management property and for some reason or another, they give it to a rival property management business, then ultimately that landlord is usually archived by the property management team. As far as I'm concerned, they're actually sellers because where do they live in terms of their principal place of residence? And in addition to that, how many of those archive landlords would like to buy another investment property because they're at a different stage in their journey since last time they exited the market? And this is a really important conversation too, also for those landlords that may have inquired on your fees. And if they say, look, you know, we've gone to another agency, no problems, but let me ask you a very simple question. If I found you something to buy, would you allow me the opportunity to be able to manage it for you on your behalf? And this is about you know, doing work in different ways that allows you to build better quality relationships to really get those landlords to actually come to market. Now, this here is an example of an investment or landlord's first email, as I call it. And it actually just has a list of all the properties that you've currently got available that are currently leased, that, uh, that literally are available for sale. These are then the properties that we think would lease well. So there's a lot of rental demand for that style of asset. And these are the properties, for example, that actually have got development potential. And so what I want you to think about is that how much value does this provide 
if you're an investor, you're a potential investor, you're a current landlord, you're an archive landlord, that you can receive a lease. And I want you to think about this because if I go to most residential real estate websites, what they don't do is they don't allow me to do that. So you might have a hundred listings available for sale, but I can't actually tell you how many of those properties are actually available for sale and already have a tenancy in play, or how many of those properties are in a position that they would lease well, or even those that have development potential. And often the most important information, like the lease end date, the amount they're getting on a weekly rental, maybe the percentage return, if that's available, that's buried somewhere in the copy because you're off too busy trying to sell it to a first home buyer as a socializer's wonderland. And so this is what great agency is all about, learning how to package information through your active part emails to make sure that you can send it to exactly the right people at a segmentation level. The second one that I've got for you is another item of value that we've been training, which is what we go to call our listed and just sold weekly email. Now, why this is a really important email is that this is about understanding that one of the greatest items of value in residential real estate was our CMA reports. Now, a CMA report was you know, something that was done on a quarterly basis, maybe even an annual basis. We used to go door to door and door knock and give it to people. And now what we've realized is the timeliness of this information is absolutely critically important because we now operate in a world that's 24 seven. And off the back of that, some recent sales results from maybe three months ago are completely different to what's actually happening in the market today, given the amount of government intervention, particularly around things like interest rates, and also to some of the issues that we've seen in New Zealand, particularly around the deposit requirements for investors, but also to the number of international purchases that are allowed or not. Now, why this is important, I am a, a buyer seller in the marketplace. I happen to be in Balmain in, in Sydney today, and I'll have a quick look at it. And, and I get this email simply from one of the agents that I do work with here. And ultimately shows me all of the new listings. So I look at those new listings and say, are any of those properties similar to mine? And I naturally, click on that address and it takes me to that particular listing on the major real estate websites. And in addition to that, are there any properties that are on there that are aspirationally the next style of property that I'd like to go and buy? So actually I'm looking for two reasons. Is there anything similar to mine or is there anything that I'd like to go to purchase? And then we then have the sales itself. So is there anything that has recently sold that is similar to my property? And or is there anything that's recently sold that I may have actually had an interest in wanting to go to purchase? And this gives me a great idea of the difference between what the agents were potentially quoting, if that was something that was published in your state or territory or country, or in addition to that, you know, what it actually sold for if it is a on public record. So that gives me a bit of an idea about what's actually happening in the marketplace. Now, this sort of document is the sort of thing that I would expect that our market appraisals would receive on a weekly basis. Uh, it's manually built inside of your active flight templates, where you actually then send out, you know, what has actually been listed or not has been sold. And for a market appraisal, this is an extreme item of value because it really shows you what is actually happening in market. Then in addition to that, I want you to think very differently. One of the largest demographics in our marketplace is what we actually go to call baby boomers. And my dad happens to be a part of this group of people. Dad said that ultimately he is closer to the sunset than the sunrise in his life. He said, you know, Josh, I've got a lot of money and, and not much time. And he was thinking about the other day going to go and buy a final home for himself and for mum. Now, the interesting conversation, they really wanted a single level property. Now, do you reckon that they could actually find that on any residential real estate agent's website? Find all properties, single level, that is lock and leave, good for a retiree? No, they literally couldn't find it. So now what we've decided to do is that we're building out email templates with our best clients that actually showcase properties in very specific segments. So here's an, an idea in a wireframe to say, okay, great, here are some single level properties that we believe are great for families. Now, in speaking with a lot of new mums and dads, they really love a single level property rather than stairs. It's a lot easier with kids. In addition to that, these are single level properties for individuals or for couples. Uh, this is particularly aimed at our over 55s. I just kind of felt that over 55 was a bit ageist and retiree felt a little bit ageist. And off the back of that, I, I didn't really know any other way to say it. So I'm just gonna say single level for individuals or couples. This feels a, it's a lot more positive. These are the properties that we've got right now that are lock and leave, you know, the great Australian or New Zealand dream, where ultimately you're gonna get the car, put the caravan on the back and literally do a lap around Australia and see Australia as one of your great bucket list items or across New Zealand in a motorhome. And then actually, these are the properties that we've actually got that are architecturally significant. So we actually have an estate agent up in Brisbane who only sells architecturally significant property. And 
And not only are they beautiful to look at, they're very aspirational, but you really want to look at his email every week because it's a little bit like a better homes and gardens, I guess, of some of the, the best properties in market. Now imagine this would be incredibly valuable if you were looking for single level homes, if you're in a position that you wanted to lock and leave, or you're looking for an architecturally significant property. The next one that I also receive is I'm on an agent's seller kit list, is that literally we operate in, a, in very much an auction market in the one that I happen to be in today. And what actually happens is that each and every week I receive a list of all of the auctions that have actually happened on Saturday, on Saturday afternoon, circa 5.30 p.m. in the evening. It gives me a list of all of the streets, all of the bed, bath, cars, and what the sale price was, if it was publicly available information. And actually then a link to every single one of those properties so I can click on it and go and have a look at it on the major real estate websites. And this is an extreme item of value because it gives me real confidence about what is actually happening in my marketplace today. And actually when I have those auction results, that actually makes me feel more empowered to seeing what's actually happening to allow me to have those conversations with my agent. Say, hey, you know what, I've got a similar property I noticed that it said that there were two active bidders on that where any chance to get one of those active bidders to come down to my place. Now that leads us into that whole conversation is that you want to position yourself to be that trusted advisor. So do you actually have an email specifically for investors? Do you have one specifically for your market appraisals around what's been listed and sold, particularly if they are a buyer seller? Are you sending out the auction results email and do you have a lifestyle email? Now you might think, wow, Josh, that's a lot of emails, but it's not really because I'm asking you to only send it to specific groups of people that are sitting on the inside of your database. And really what you've got to think about is that someone's actually got to build a relationship with you so they feel like they know you, they feel like ultimately they like you, and they feel like they trust you. So getting known is a big thing in the marketplace. Getting that opt-in to receive your marketing items is a massive part of what it is that we do. Now, if you have a look at this is absolutely exploded in the retail and the app environment, you got to book a restaurant, you receive an email prior, you receive a reminder, you receive another email once you've gone to the restaurant, you know, post the experience, what was it like, the survey, all of the above. But yet in residential real estate, we're not necessarily doing that. So if you went with your email address to most real estate agents' websites and you were just trying to just give them your email address so that you could subscribe to receive their email alerts, you'd often be left wanting in most of those website designs. So we need to be getting and starting to build up our email list from the day that we actually meet that particular buyer. And that's probably going to be through the major real estate portals when ultimately they opt in. Then in addition to that, it's about making sure that when we're there at the open for inspection, we're getting an email address. And again, when we're starting to work to book in for a market appraisal, a listing presentation, um, you know, that we need to be making sure that we're getting the email address of that seller. And this is important because what you've got to realize is that in the modern world, whenever there is a listing or a sale, who does that fundamentally impact? So let's say, for example, that you know that I own a property that's worth 800 grand and you've just listed a rival property down the corner, which is a very similar home. It's like, hey guys, thought we'd quickly check in. Just wanted to let you know, we've just listed number 12, James Street. That property is very similar to yours. We're going to track that sales result for you and let you know what it makes. By the way, how are things with you? And how's the house? Two great questions to identify the, the dissatisfaction in the client. Would it be okay if I let you know when it sells and what it makes? Yeah, that would be fine. Now, when that property actually sells, that one's just sold for 800 grand. Uh, we know that there are two buyers that were left over on that one. What should we do with those buyers? Should we mention your place or should we potentially go to sell them something else? So now in a couple of seconds, you've just identified deep relationship because you really are their friend in the business. Again, when a new property comes to market, something that aspiration they should go and buy, you can say, hey guys, we've actually just listed this property. Uh, it says it's a perfect upgrade for someone just like you. You should go and have a quick look at it. Here's the link, have a quick look at that. Hey, by the way, it's now being sold. What did you think? And naturally you're starting to build relationship. If you then layer that with your digital communications around what's been listed and what's been sold, you will substantially amplify your buyer and seller list that sits inside of any great real estate business. And this is about really understanding that you've got to tell them, tell them, and tell them again to actually get customers into that position. And they say, you know what, you are definitely going to be my agent of choice. Now, one of the things that I do is, is that in order to be able to improve your win rate in that listing lounge room, not only have you got to have built relationship in the way that you're prospecting through those really good quality emails, you've now got to be in a position that you've got to actually help people to understand the reasons on why they should use you. Now, one of the things that we did, Mark, very simply, 
we went to the three of our most recent clients and we just asked them, hey, why did you make the decision to use me? And it was pretty interesting because people said, hey, Josh, we use you because of your energy. We use you because of ultimately the way that you think. And we use you because you're the systems guy. Do this, get that, tick this box, make that happen. And so what we've worked out is that ultimately a lot of real estate agents actually survey their clients at the point of settlement. And ultimately that's going to bring up all the settlement issues and the issues about the sales process. And you said this and it sold for that and whatever, which is the market conditions, which none of us can actually control. So what great agencies really do is that in the 24 hours after someone has actually signed an agency agreement, we find out what were the three reasons why they made the decision to go with us. And what you're going to do is you're going to find out what they think that they've bought. So maybe they think they've bought someone who's got speed because you sold the house next door, or maybe you can save some funds because you spoke to them about the power of your off-market email marketing platform. And this is a really important conversation to start to understand how you go to work with people. And you've got to think you know, specifically about customers and what they ultimately care about. So what does the customer actually care about? And if you're thinking that you're a buyer seller, then you want to know what's actually been listed and what is being sold in your marketplace at any one point in time. And that's ultimately a really interesting conversation because if you were a paramedic, the last thing that you'd want your paramedic to do is if they turned up and they literally saw you in a car, the car had been flipped over, petrol was you know coming out of the car, naturally there was no one else around, the light pole was down, there was a live electrical wire, you wouldn't want the paramedic coming up and say, hey, did you know I'm the number one paramedic uh, on, on Rate My Paramedic? Did you know that I'm the number one paramedic in my area or that I'm really good with my Google reviews on fixing needs? And this is the challenge is that, you know, we go with this social proof, ego-based marketing, rather than really connecting in with the hopes and dreams and the aspirations of our buyers and our buyer sellers in marketplace. So those three reasons why people list with you are ultimately such an important conversation because you've got to make sure that you work it out and that then you've got to present it. So Mark, I just wanted to say this to you. I've actually just been to three of my most recent clients and I just asked them, hey, why did you make the decision to use me as your agent? And the first thing that they said is that we really love the way that you keep us informed. You send us an email every Saturday with a list of all the properties that have been sold and what the auction results have been. The second reason why we wanted to go with you is that you've been phenomenal every week in helping us to find something to buy to naturally give us the confidence to go and sell. And that's because you send us your weekly email about what has actually been listed and ultimately what has been sold in the marketplace. And the third thing that we love about you is that you've been phenomenal to actually send us some really good investment opportunities that we could have pursued, which are investment properties that already have an existing lease in play. Like, like they might not be the three reasons, right? But there are three really good reasons for someone to make the decision to use you to be their agent and to ultimately pay you more with pleasure because ultimately we have built relationship. And this is the big part of it, that ultimately the best feedback is within 24 hours of signing that agency agreement. That's where the sellers are really going to tell you what they perceive that they have bought. Now, interestingly enough, Harley Davidson don't sell motorbikes. They literally sell the Freedom Machine. Chanel don't sell home ba- handbags. What they actually sell is the moment of arrival, the moment of significance. And so we actually don't sell houses. Um, what I want you to think about is that whenever someone buys or sells a property, what does that sale actually represent for him? For, so, for example, in a deceased estate, that might be the end of an era. It might be the end of a whole series of family holidays at that particular holiday house. You get the idea. But it's really important to actually understand what it is that you do because people buy beyond the product or the service. And this is literally the whole conversation that, like, you know, Snickers really satisfies, you know, Kit Kat, you go and take a break. You're in a position, you start thinking about how they position their brands. What are you doing to position your brand in terms of your email consistency of what you actually set out to market? And ultimately, people buy what the product really does for them. So what you've got to learn to do is you've got to learn how to position in a very powerful way so that naturally you can be a much better quality agent. Now, ultimately, the secrets to overcome those fears and insecurities and doubts and fears of those customers and actually appeal to their confidence is a really important conversation. And what I say to people is that now more than ever before, we've got to make sure that we are really clear about really getting that determination and that drive on so that people can say, hey, you know what, you are the agent of choice because you understand my fears, uh, the challenges, the insecurities, the doubts that I've got. But at the same time, too, you're connecting with my aspirations and where I would actually like to go. So the easiest way to do that is to come up with a set of questions 
that naturally allow you to go to open up for people. So whenever you're working with a buyer and you're there at an open for inspection, one of the best questions to ask is why this one? So when someone walks through, hey, why this one? I really like the high span garage. Why is that? Well, I've got a big four wheel drive and I want somewhere to park it. And you know that there's not many properties available on market right now with a high span garage. You've actually just found out the reason why they want to buy. Hey, why now? Well, ultimately we've got a job relocation. We're having a baby. Uh, we're in a position that literally we sold ours last weekend, but we need to do something because X, Y, Z. You've now found out the motivation and why they actually want to do a trade or a transaction. But then when you're there and you're at that market appraisal, you've got to learn how to go to connect with more people. So if you did sell, why would you? And this is such a great question. Well, to be honest, you know, we've always wanted to move to the coast or we want to move to the country or we want to go and do these things. Or ultimately, hey, if you sell this, then what? And this is one of the greatest challenges is that no real estate agents actually really think about what they're doing in the questions that they're asking. If you sell this one, then what? Well, you know what? We'd always wanted to move back to the city. You get the idea. And one of my favorite questions in coaching people, whether or not it be a buyer, a seller, a tenant or a landlord, I say, hey, so what's next for you? And this allows people to open up and to talk aspirationally about where they're going next and what it is that they're ultimately going to be doing. So, Mike, let's go and have a great conversation there because what we've done is we started to talk about the importance of really making sure that you go to build really good quality relationships, right? And it's about mirroring what you're doing at a marketing level to make sure that that's actually coming through in your emails and then segmenting their database. Now, you've been around the marketing side of stuff for, for a long time. What were some of the key points or some questions that that might have risen? And, and we should also open it up that if anyone's got a question or they want to chat with us today, we've left a few minutes for some Q&A today to really get you focused on what you can do to become a much better agent inside of your marketplace. Mark, over to you, a couple of things that might have hit you in that little session. I've got you muted there, Mark, I think. <laughs> I've got my gums in now. Yeah, yeah, I did get that. Did you just want to go with that again? Because I didn't quite get that bit. Mute, mute. All right, I'll start again. Um, I was just really, really impressed. Sorry, I'll cut this down now because I've already gambled on a bit around how how you delineated and how how um, within the the SaaS platform you were able to an active pipe you're able to delineate between the database and if you can find that information out and split it and be really um, target centric you're doing that your value of your audience a great service and you're creating that trust value so i think that was a really valid point that you brought on and to create relevant questions and when you no, i think that's 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 you, i think that was really that's important that's to, to to get those very specific questions that you're asking people and then provide it and insert it into the database. So you, then you're delineating again between all your database. So that was really, I thought that was really value. Well, Mike, I think there were the big conversations. A lot of real estate agents have said, kind of said, okay, great. Like, like I've got email, I've set and forget it. And, and that's kind of it. And they've probably been sending the same email for the last decade. And it's literally, it's like a list of every single thing that they've actually got available for sale or auction. And it's like the world's longest email. And I was having a quick look at it. Like if you go to Countdown in New Zealand or you're here with Woolworths or Coles in Australia, mate, they don't send you a list of all 8,000 items that they've got available in the supermarket. They literally just say cherries $2.49.
And before you know it, you've clicked on that and now you're on the website and now you're also then going to go buy some strawberries and some cream and, you know, whatever to watch Wimbledon. You get the idea. And, and when mm. you start thinking about what we're doing inside of residential real estate, one of the great challenges is that we're sending out a list of everything as, a part, as opposed to thinking about who is actually the demographic of the profile or the type of person that would buy this particular asset. And let's make sure that we've got it positioned. Now, what I showed there today was just wireframes, right? So you can do so many great things in terms of pulling that in. I actually don't mind some of these text hookers to some of these emails, particularly if it's actually really segmented correctly. And I was thinking a little bit about that lifestyle email. Is a, do you know that I would pay more for a single level house than I would for a multi-story house? Now, I get that I can ultimately go and have a quick look at that and I can work out that it's multi-story because of the floor plan. But, you know, you've made me do extra work to try to figure that out. If I just had a list of those single level houses or people that are north of two million or whatever the story is, then ultimately then I can go to see those properties, you know, really clearly. And that's ultimately what we've got to do is we've got to learn how to really make that powerful. And Mark, one of the other key things that I, I often get a lot of agents go is that, hey, my database is really dirty. And I'm like, how dirty is your database? And they're like, yeah. oh, it's filthy. And I'm like, okay, great. So what's your plan on how to clean that up? And so what you can do is that with the survey tool that sits inside of ActivePipe, is you can literally just press that button, get people in to go and do the survey, and naturally it's going to find out and tell you who are the best people in your database that are looking to do something. And this is a thing that a lot of agents haven't thought about, how to tailor your communications to make sure the right message is landing into the right inbox at exactly the right time. So one of the things that, that people can do is that they can literally update their profile, which then goes in to sync back to your CRM to change what their buyer requirements are in terms of the area, type of property, and price point. So when I first started looking in Balmain, I had a budget of about, I don't know, five or 600 grand and, you know, I didn't find anything and things got better. And then I started looking at 800 and then eventually then I thought, oh, you know, bugger it, I'll just put all the money in. What, what would I buy for one, two? And I ended up spending more than that. But the interesting conversation is, is that literally how would that real estate agent have updated their details if they don't use an email system that allows them to automatically update their preferences? And this is now about saying, hey, Although in the early days, you might have bought ActivePipe purely for the set and forget mechanism, now's actually the time to actually learn that there's some really powerful things that you can build inside of the journey builder. And there's some really powerful templates now that you can actually use to allow you to modify that and start to think differently about the segmentation. So when that data sync comes across from your CRM into the back end of ActivePipe, you're now using that as that tool. And that might be as simple as saying, hey, you know, on Mondays, we send out a list of the auction results. On Fridays, we send what's been listed, what's been sold. Uh, we then do our lifestyle email on a Wednesday. You know, so then that way we've actually got our marketing teams, admin teams in the back end, understanding that this is what we're going to build. And we're not going to put everything there. And ultimately, we're going to send it to that page on the website where additional properties can be if that's required. But we're really going to try to trick the interest that they're going to be clicking on that particular hallmark listing. I don't know about you, but on the weekend, I got an agent's email and I saw a, a really cool architectural property over in, in Bondi. And I'm like, you know what, next weekend, I'm probably going to go and have a look at that. And, and I'm mm. not even thinking of buying and selling, but yeah. yet I'm going to be in the car and driven to go and have a look at that asset. And so literally, it's about reimagining, right? And mm. here's the question for you, Mark. What, how do you feel about adding you to your database and seeing what you get from you? Do you think a lot of agents might be horrified by that prospect? Um, I believe a lot of agents would be horrified by that prospect. Uh, for me personally, I'd hate to think. Um, I personally have just built and finished a house. So I was I was in a different class in terms of how I would have been probably facilitated into that. Um, also, having just moved from Australia to New Zealand, it would have probably been really hard to uh, be part of any sort of database. But I'm sure when I was walking around and, and collecting and collected data from um, other agents, I'm sure I would have picked up a few bits and pieces. And it would be, Josh, I, I throw this bone back. With saying that, with um, Active Pipe, is the information able to be shared across New Zealand and Australia? Is that is that an option at the moment? Is it? Oh, yeah, so certainly what happens in the back end is that literally you've got one contact class. And if you're a part of like a, a, a bigger group, let's say, for example, like um, – one of the most dominant is probably like a Harcourt's in both Australia and New Zealand as like a mm -hmm. dual brand. Uh, um, I know yeah. that LJ Hooker, for example, Ray White, you know, th those sorts of brands certainly play in both markets. But I, I just mm. say to agents, it's this simple, right? If you're there at an open for inspection and I found out that you were selling in Melbourne, but naturally you're in a position that literally you were looking to go and buy in Hamilton, I could sell a property for you in, Mel in I could sell your property for you in Melbourne, 
I reached out to a couple of key people and say, hey, you know, Josh Fegan, do you know anyone who sells residential real estate in Melbourne? Yeah, I do. You know, there's this particular mm-hmm. client, you know, whatever that is. It might be, say, a, a Gels Craig or a Nelson Alexander or whatever, depending on your area. And the interesting conversation is, as an agent in New Zealand, you could generate a referral fee for a listing in Melbourne. And so, like, this is what you've got to do is that beyond platform, you've actually got to think that way. We actually had a client the other day do this. Um, it's quite interesting. Uh, she's a sales agent in Adelaide and actually found someone who wanted to sell on the upper North Shore of Sydney. And they came to me and they said, oh, do you know someone? And I did. And an agent by the name of William Chan went and put that transaction together. And it was like a, you know, I don't know, $70,000, $80,000 fee. And there was a 20% referral fee that went back to that agent in in, uh, in Adelaide. So I have a quick look at that. It's like a $14,000 fee that was generated by referring you because you're, you're actually finding someone who's a seller who's moving to your area. And this is really where the promise ground is, is that buyer-seller work is probably the most important thing that you can do. Understanding like literally who are the buyer sellers in your marketplace. Mark, this is a thing that a lot of people don't get right. Is that, you know, you went out, you did a hundred market appraisals last year. How many of those 100 market appraisals are actually naturally buyer sellers? So in other words, if I found them something to buy, then naturally they would sell. And so I, I was a bit cheeky recently with a couple of the agents in Balmain. I, I, it wouldn't be like me to do that, but I actually got a check and I wrote out 70 grand on it. And I literally took a photo of it and I sent it to a couple of local agents. And I said, hey, here is a check for you at my place, ready for you to come and pick up 70 grand. All you got to do, find me someone to buy and then you can sell mine. And it was kind of an interesting conversation because for the first time, for some of them, there was that cognition moment that they're actually understanding that the easiest way to get the listing is to actually help them find something to buy. And that's mm-hmm. actually where you've got to start to think that like active pipe plays a massive part in building out your platform play to understanding who the buyer sellers are, what people are actually doing, because it can show you the digital intent of what consumers are doing. And you see that with the survey tool, you see that with the update tool. You also see the segmentation tool about who's clicking on what, who's an investor, who's actually an app grader, you know, based on them, what they're doing once they get to the website and what actually happens with their cookies and where they all go, right? Yeah, it's just learning that you've actually now got to start to think very differently about what you've done. Welcome to 2023. If you're not relevant, I just unsubscribe. But the lesson is you've built done all of the effort to get me there. Now put a little bit of effort into the actual template that you're going to be sending including your body and your headline. And I know a lot of people are pretty interested in that, this chat GPT and generative AI, so we can write better headlines for you and better body copy. But just, you know, get into a position that you start to think about better quality segmentation in that email so the right messages are landing it to the right people at exactly the right time. Sounds fantastic. Thank you, Josh. We're, we're coming up at 4.45. I'd, I'd just like to point out to everyone that, yes, the, uh, the webinar will be available from, and you will get an email, from outcome this at CRM that will be auto subscribed uh, out to you guys to just give you context uh, and see Josh again and unfortunately myself on mute uh, to uh, see it all again um, on the website at Active Pipe. So again, thank you, Josh, for um, such an insightful webinar and really talking about how important it is to know and to understand your audience and nurture them. Um, I think it's very yeah. valuable. Even for me, who's been in the industry, uh, market industry for the last twenty plus years, it's it's always uh, it's always nice to hear a parallel between the industries, uh, between mm-hmm. PPC and digital marketing that I do, and and what you guys do in terms of the real estate marketing industry. I just think about this way, Mark. Like, literally, we've had an item of value in our business for about fifteen years. So, you know, I, I do a daily email, it goes out every day. I do a weekly coaching tip. I got a podcast with Alexander Phillips. And, and each of those things go out um, regularly and consistently. And a lot of people might not know this, but my original background before residential real estate is I actually worked in newspapers and we had to get a newspaper out every day. And so we learned the discipline of publishing consistently. And what I would say to real estate agents is that you are no different. If you want to yeah. build a high relationship of trust, you want to be seriously well known and you want to know your stuff. So you're better in a ne- negotiation. You're better at the listing room table. You're better at actually winning those listings and you've got to make the decision to know the discipline of what's been listed and what's been sold, putting that into an email every week, sending that to your previous market appraisals. It's an absolute formula to ace it in this game to get higher fees and just be awesome at what you do. So, Mark, I actually think you've been an amazing man today. Uh, thank you so much. Um, you did get me to do a little bit of lip reading there for just a couple of seconds. Um, I think I got the gist of it. And uh, we can't wait to see you in our next uh, Active Pipe Moxie Works uh, webinar. Appreciate it. Thank you, Josh. Uh, thank you, everyone. And uh, again, you'll be able to get the 
the reply back on ActivePod.com. Appreciate your time, awesome. Josh. Thanks, team. Thank Have a good day. Much. Cheers. Yeah.